There we go. All right, so we're here Monday night for some good old fashioned training, sitting in the middle of November, right? Um, today's training is gonna be on how to find new business. Okay, we're not gonna be talking about products. We're not gonna be talking about sales techniques or anything. I'm gonna just teach you guys how to find business because here's the reality. You could be the best closer in the world. You could have the best IUL on the planet. You really could. You could be the best uh, person at getting referrals. You could, you could be. But if you don't know how to begin the first domino to this business, which is finding business, if you don't know how to find business, then you're never going to close business. If you, don't, if you don't know how to find the people that need the life insurance, you're never going to sell the life insurance. If you don't find the people that need the investments that we're bringing to the table, you're never going to sell the investment. So, so a lot of this business entails your ability to find. You don't get paid to close, you get paid to find, right? And, and if you've ever gone through, if you've been in this business before for a while, or you've been in any kind of sales and you go through a drought, you guys know what I mean when I say you go through a drought, that period of time where you, you should be selling your norm, but you're not. And it's just a dry spell. You're like, man, I can't close business to save my life. I can't make that, you know, you, what, what, you're, what you're doing is you're getting ready for something big that's going to happen on the back end because you're, you're searching so much for business, right? That when you finally find it, it turns into a pretty big one. You don't get paid to close, you get paid to find, right? You don't get paid to close, you get paid to find, okay? So I'm going to talk about today different ideas that I use when it comes to finding business. And I'm going to be talking about, you know, I, I'm, I hopefully will resonate with the lead gen people as I will the recruiters, as I will the referral type individuals. I mean, the, I'm just going to talk about what it is that I've done to find business. And I'm going to talk about it in today's time as though I'm a brand new agent in today's time, 2021, because when I was a brand new agent, we didn't have nearly as many resources that we have right now. We really did not. We don't have nearly as many resources that we have right now. So I'm going to tell you what I would do if I was a brand new agent in today's time to find business. Okay, good. Cool. Now, before I get started, um, let's give some let's give some love, right? Some recognition here. We're sitting today on the 15th of the month, middle of the month. Um, bum, 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 bum. Give some love to Shelly Tillman, who's got some business in the system. Give some love to David Okaleka, who's got some business in the system. Give some love to Howard Rabinowitz, who has some business in the system. Um, do, 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 do. We've got right now a total of about 62,000 right now in submitted business, 15th of the month, first, first, first half. So, so that's, 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 a, that's a strong number. Now, a lot of that number, I will tell you, is coming from more of our white labeled organizations. Right now, Sandra's downstairs having, um, having a meeting with, with one of our white labeled companies. Um, it's kind of cool the way they run their operation. They run it like a franchise. They literally have a legitimate licensed franchise that sells both life and annuity, but also does property and casualty, credit restoration, a couple other things that they're doing as well too. But they created a franchisable model and it's kind of cool because um, um, it's a whole different, I mean, it's totally different than anything TKO has, has, has on the table. And we are their back office. Now, white labeling, so that you guys know, basically means that their company name is the only thing that shows up. TKO does not show up. So it's kind of cool because their agents have no idea that TKO is their back office. Their agents have zero idea that TKO is their back office. All of their branding, their website, their enrollment links, their new business submissions, their contracting, everything. They have their own complete system completely wiped out from TKO. That's something that from a VP level and up, you can do it, right? Um, who typically does it? People that are running pretty large operations already and don't want their agents to feel like they're changing organizations. They want to keep everything status quo so they white label themselves so that their agents don't notice any kind of shifts or changes. That person has their own website. Like I said, have their own enrollment links. There is a monthly cost to white label because our website developers, our back office developers have to pretty much recreate everything that we've created inside of the TKO website, it has to recreate it on their side and their stuff needs to still communicate with our things. So I give them the respect that they deserve in making sure that I never announce who these white labeled organizations are. 
I provide them that back office support. You'll never see them, you know, mixing in with our training or anything like that. So if you're that person, you're that visionary, and I have no problem with that. I have no offense. Trust me, I have zero offense to anybody, any agency owner saying, hey, you know, to looking at me and saying, hey, I, 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 I would want just my company name to show. I have no problem with that. Matter of fact, this VP is assigning all the commissions for the entire agency to them. And then they have their own complete separate payroll. That's how much white, that's how white labeled they are that, you know, my, my payroll department doesn't even send commissions to the individual agents. It just sends it to them and then they disperse it out. It's pretty cool. Anyways, they're, they're killing, they're, they're doing some big numbers right now. A um, couple dates to keep in mind next month, we do not have a closers college, but what we do have next month, month of December is we have our our TKO business planning strategy session, okay? Um, open to whomever uh, wishes to come, but I want them to be very serious about that meeting because what we're doing in that meeting is we're gonna be doing an entire, entire day of business planning to figure out what 2022 has in store for you. That's gonna be in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. You're gonna be flying into the PHL, the Philadelphia airport, okay? The dates is December 12th. December 12th, which means you would fly in December 11th, Saturday, December 12th, Sunday, we would be in, uh, in, in our IMO's conference room, uh, do an entire day of strategy session. And then the next day, Monday, the 13th, fly back. This is not, you know, anything but just let's, let's, let's strategize, let's figure out your year, right? If X amount of money is amount that you want to bring into the table, then let's figure out what you need to be doing on a monthly basis from a from a dial standpoint, from a lead gen standpoint, from a referral standpoint, how many people need to answer the call? I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna literally reverse engineer every activity of this business so you have a good roadmap to get you to that goal and to in, in order to get you on there on time. There is gonna be some, some advanced training going on with regards to long-term care, um, disability insurance, some of the new up and coming concepts that I really wanna focus some attention on that we're gonna be having. But the majority of it is just literally business strategy session. I think I've got like eight, agents right now, excuse me, eight agents right now that have committed uh, to attending. I think Jennifer, Jennifer Jung, you're, I believe you, you've, you've committed on that one as well too. Um, I'll look through the list. It's a, it's a, it's a decent size uh, amount of agents that are looking to go. It does, I don't want it to be 25, 30 because to be quite frank, you know, no, I'm lying. Let me state that. I would love it to be 25, 30 agents that really want to invest into their business and strategize. Um, right now we're sitting at about seven to eight of them which is kind of what I was anticipating and so, and such, okay, it's, you know, you got to invest, right? You got to fly out, you got to get a hotel. I am working on a discounted rate for the hotel. So bear with me on that one. We're going to get that. I just need to get more of an updated um, count of which agents are going to be coming because I got to, when I come to a hotel, I tell them, Hey, this is how many rooms I need you to block off. And they give it to us at a discounted cost for it. Flights are dirt cheap right now, guys. I just booked Florida round trip um, and it was like $67 round trip per person. I added a baggage for another 35 bucks and I'm spending a hundred bucks round trip. So trust me when I tell you, it's totally, totally worth it. If you really need somebody to take a, a good look at your business and kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of iron out what activity you need to be doing on a daily basis to make your 2022 a very strong, a strong year for you, like the best year you've ever had just yet. Right. So all right, um, that's that piece. January 29th, which is a Saturday, is our 2022 Closers College kickoff. That's going to be in Fort Myers, Florida. Okay. I'm expecting to see CJ Noel insurance agents there all over the place, right? I'm looking at Robertson right now. He's like, man, you must be talking to me. Yes, I'm talking directly to you because that is your home turf. I'm expecting to see East Coast agents there, not a problem. Central Florida agents there, not a problem. So people like Jordan and Tanisha and George Caravasi and Rob Raw, Irvin Berg, all of my local guys that all they gotta do is drive. I'm expecting to see you guys there. We're gonna get a real nice conference room. We're gonna have a real good time. Um, I know that area fairly well. So we'll, you know, we'll, we might even do like a little dinner cruise. I got a connection. On a guy who can hook it up with some nice dinner cruises. Um, I'm expecting to see some Illinois people too. If I'm not mistaken, Jennifer Jung is also coming. 
going to be coming to that. The VPs are going to be coming to that. I think we'll be able to see Lucia Maldonado for the first time as well, too, to that as well. That is going to be our kickoff closures college. It'll probably run like an all day event, like 10 o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at night. I'm looking to have some of the vendors fly in. Trust me, vendors have no problem in January flying into Florida because most wholesalers and vendors, right? Like Silac, American National, Ali, all these guys, their home office is in like in the Midwest and they're going to be going through like negative 10 degree weather. So they have no problem flying over. They have no problem paying for lunches, paying for breakfasts, maybe even paying for a couple happy hours, but it's well worth it. Block it off, guys. Um, January 29th, it's a Saturday. Again, if you're flying in, fly in the night before, fly out the day after. That way, you know, you get to participate in all the extravaganzas. I will get you the information on the hotel. Um, that's on my project to-do list, but it'll probably be, I'm not going to lie, it'll probably be on my list closer to December. Um, the end of December, probably after Christmas, I'll start finalizing on that. And let, me, and let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I just got noticed last week that where I'm currently living at is not going to be renewing. They're not going to be renewing the, the lease. And if you've taken a look at what's happening in the rental market in Florida, it's freaking outrageous. So I have to like, out of nowhere, find a new home to go pick. I'm, I'm, not, in a, I'm not looking to buy right now because the market's way too stinking high. So I'm waiting for it to drop down. But I found a beautiful house that I'm looking to move into. Um, 3,600 bucks a month in right now. $3,600 a month in rent. It's insane. Tell all your family members that live up north to stop moving to Florida, please. The real estate market is getting crushed right now because you got all this northern money. You got people in New York that are used to buying seven figure, you know, two bedroom apartments coming over here and they're like, oh my God, I can get a five bedroom house for, for 500, 600, 700,000. We look at it like, holy crap, that's crazy. They look at it like, oh my God, it's on discount. And because of that, everything's gone through the freaking roof. It's insane what's happening. But that's what's going to be happening with me. I mean, I, I'm leaving to Costa Rica this next week and then coming back, packing up and making moves to move. So you'll, you'll be seeing a, a pretty hectic, a pretty hectic next 30 to 45 days, not including the holidays and anything like that. Rob just text messaged me. They're raising his from 32 to 4,900 bucks a month. Rob, 4,900 a month. We work in a great industry. I got to tell y'all because I'm not even going to lie. As stressed out as Sandra was when she heard the news, I said to her, I go, we're blessed that we work in an industry that allows us to make those types of pivots. I had to write a check. First, last, and security, 10,800 bucks here unexpectedly. Well, just before we take a trip to Costa Rica, just before the month of the holidays, Christmas time. And I'm like, I don't know how, I don't know how some people in middle America that work a regular nine to five do it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's going to be a lot of bridges in my opinion that are going to get full. Kobe, go, go. Sorry, my dog is moving all my technology. If you see the camera move, it's a 60 pound boxer. Kobe, go. There you go. Thank you. Relax. Come on. You want to say hi to the people? Come on. Come here. Come say hi. You guys want to see my boxer? Come here. Come here. Oh, look at you, my little puppy. Look at this guy right here. Look at this guy right here. He's like a ball of energy. He's like a little Tasmanian devil. My goodness. Anyways, okay, go. Go play. Go play. You guys are twins. That's what everybody says. We look like twins, right? The, the brown, the black. You're right. You're right. I ain't gonna lie, right? They say your dog looks like your owner. That's what it is. I have a cane corzo. He's 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 bigger, gray. Don't tell him, don't tell Sandra that she looks like him because that would be an insult. Because he looks nothing like me. <laughs> but anyways, let's start training. Um, if I'm a brand new agent today, 2021, just got my license. And I really want to max out this business. And I have the opportunity that technology provides me right now. I'm going to give you just, I'm going to throw out a bunch of ideas. You're free to grab whichever ones you're comfortable doing. You're free to throw away whichever ones you don't like. Okay. Um, I, if I were you, I'd be doing every single one of them, right? Like that, that's what I would be doing if I'm trying to build my business. I would be leveraging number one, this right here, technology. If you're not leveraging your technology right now to get in front of new people, you're really missing out. And here's what I mean by that. I would be on Facebook. I would be on Instagram. I would be on LinkedIn. Those, those would probably be my primaries, okay? Um, I'm going to confess that I don't know enough about TikTok right now, but I'm hearing a lot of good stuff about TikTok. 
um, with regards to creating rooms and topics and things like that. I'm hearing a lot of good stuff about it, but I don't, I don't know enough. Jordan's like, yeah, right. I think I see Jordan has, has a TikTok. She, she uploads some of her videos on, on IG as well too. Um, but that, that I would definitely be, I'm going to tell you what I do know, right. I'll be leveraging IG. I'd be leveraging Facebook. I'd be leveraging LinkedIn. Facebook would be my primary. Why? Facebook is millennial generation social media. IG, you know, and uh, IG and TikTok and Snapchat and all those, that is generation Z, your social media, right? But when you think of Facebook, you, you're thinking of the 30-year-old client, right? You're thinking, because that was the era, right? And those are the people that I'm trying to attract, right? So if I'm going to go after a marketing campaign, I want to define the clientele that I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone that is between 30 to 45 years of age, you know? Um, married um, and or has children. That's what I'm looking for, point blank period, right? I mean, I know Tony at 18, Tony at 28, and Tony at 38 are three completely different Tonys, completely different Tonys. Tony at 18 didn't give a damn about savings, didn't give a damn about finances, insurance, nothing, nothing. Tony at 28 was trying to get his stuff together, cared about insurance, but didn't have enough money to really start putting money away and investing into himself. That's Tony at 28, right? He had kids. He was married. He, he, he could afford the term insurance policy, maybe a small little IUL here and there. But quite frankly, he just wasn't making enough in his business to really, to really make an impact in his savings, right? Plus, Tony at 28 still thought he had a lot of time left. That's what Tony at 28 thought. I still got a lot of time left. I'm good. Tony at 38, this guy right here right now, looks at him and is like, holy crap, I don't got that much time left. <laughs> I need to start double downing. But Tony at 38 has a lot, more, a lot more experience, a lot more seasoning in this industry. And as a result, is making a heck of a lot more money as a 38-year-old than he was as a 28-year-old. And as a result, can now invest a heck of a lot better and is more excited about seeing his investment account grow versus his, his friends list growing, right? That's, that's, it's a different mindset. Tony, Tony at 18, right? I want to talk to those people, 30 to 45. That's the market. Because not only do they have responsibilities, but they're also getting into the prime of their career. So they're making good money. They can make better choices. That's who I'm going after. Now with Facebook, here's what I would do. I would create groups. One of the many benefits that Facebook has is the ability to create groups and create topics. Okay. I would create groups about insurance topics. I would create groups about um, 401k topics, but I would also do something else. I would join groups. I would join groups. You know what kind of groups I would join? Think about company, think about industries right now that are getting heavily affected. Think about industries right now that are getting heavily affected and employment is becoming a big issue. The medical field is getting affected. Why? Because a lot of these medical facilities are requiring vaccinations and there's a good amount of people that are completely anti the vaccine. You know that right now they're starting to call this the great, the great resignation. Check it out on Google, type it up, the great resignation. There's so many people right now that are resigning from their jobs because of the vaccination requirement. Well, what happens when someone resigns? They lose their benefits. Life insurance is health insurance. All that goes out the window, right? What else do they have? They have maybe old 401k money that now needs to move. They need to find a place to move it to, right? So if I was you, matter of fact, let me, let me share screen here a little bit here. Let me, actually, let me actually screen share and show you exactly what I would do. If I was a brand new agent, late tonight, you know, glass of wine, wanted to kind of create my own little marketing campaign for free, what would I do, right? Let me type up 2021, the great resignation, see what pops up. Look, the great, look at much info. The great resignation could get worse if companies aren't careful. This was just 19 hours ago, Fortune, Fortune Magazine. Uh, let me see here. The great resignation picking up a stream on Friday, we learned the, the quit rate has hit a new record high with 4.4 million workers voluntarily quitting their jobs 
in September, right? So you know what I want to find out? I want to find out which companies recently are being impacted by this. I want to know which companies people are either getting laid off or which companies people are, at, are, are actually quitting. Let me see if this article here is a couple. How knowledge workers, blah, 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 okay, okay. Better. Let's look up in Google here. 2021 um, companies requiring vaccination. Let's see. New York companies mandating vaccines for all or some employees. I want to know that information. But there's going to be a good amount of people that are completely anti that. What is this? Uh, back to the continuous site. Stop it. After Food and Drug Administration granted approval, here's a list of companies who have already announced their vaccination plans Amtrak requiring all of its 17,500 employees to be fully vaccinated. Write that name down, Amtrak, Anthem, BlackRock, Cisco. Cisco is a huge company. Citigroup, CVS Health. Look at all these companies. Delta Airlines, DoorDash, Equinox. All of these companies, I'm writing them down. The social media giant announced August 12th, these these, these and he's pushing back its return to the office of the citing concerns. Okay, the Delta variant. Okay. Ford. Now, why, why is it important for me to know these company names? I'll tell you what I would then do. I'd go to LinkedIn. I'm going to go to LinkedIn. And I'm going to research those companies. And I want to see if LinkedIn will give me a list of people that are employed by those companies. Right now I'm doing market research. Now I'm really honing in. And if I find those people, you know what I might do? I might send them an introductory message, a copy and paste type of message. And the message might be, hey, listen, I'm not sure if you're getting impacted by the vaccination requirement at your current employer. My firm works with people that have gotten affected in that regard with reference to protecting their retirement assets and providing them insurance needs for those that are losing their employee benefits. Give me, let, let, you know, let, let's set up a time. Let's have, let's have a phone call. Here's my phone number, right? Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. That's what I'm doing because there's a lot of people right now that are, I mean, literally there wasn't there, wasn't there guys, wasn't there an airlines that like they went on strike recently. It was all over the news. Anybody know the name? Anybody remember the name of that? Southwest. What was that? Southwest. There it is. Southwest. Right, Southwest Airlines. And it was because of the vaccination requirement, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, there's a lot of people that are rebelling that. People that are quite frankly just like, no, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it. That's what I'd be looking at. I'd be looking at that. If I'm a brand new agent in this industry, I want to put together a social media campaign that revolves around that. Okay. Um, government officials, if I'm not mistaken, right now, there's certain areas where teachers are now getting required to get the vaccination. You know what I'm doing on Facebook is I'm joining teachers organizations. I'm joining teachers groups, teachers chats, right? And, I, and I'm wanting to see what it is that they're talking about. I'm wanting to see, you know, if I can build some rapport in there and, and drop in a couple different little, little bits of nuggets, right? For example, let me, let me tell you right now. Um, okay. National Life Group. I don't know if you guys know this. National Life Group is holds the largest employee pension, uh, employer pension plan for the school board in the entire United States. The largest. You represent them. You're an independent agent. You represent them. So that's a good in when you talk to teachers. I, re you know, I represent an organization that handles the largest pension plan for the entire school board in the United States of America. Nothing wrong with that. You want to know more details about it? Contact NLG. That's what I would do as an agent. I contact NLG and I want to learn about that. Tell, transfer me to the department that handles the pension plan for the school board. Okay, I want to I want to learn, I want, I want some facts on that. Do you have any flyers, any brochures? You can send me anything on that. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. 100 percent That's what I'm doing. Okay. 
those are the kind of campaigns that I'm, that I'm looking to do, right? Now, what else am I doing? If I'm a brand new agent, I'm putting a list together of two types of people. One list, the market of people that you think you can make clients again, warm markets, warm markets, put a list again. Second list, the people that you think won't do business with you. Again, if you come from the industry, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, man, I already called these 40, 50 people at my past company. I don't know if I want to call them again. Put that list together. Put that list together. Put the list of people that you think will. Put the list together of people that you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in the, the NFL list. What's that? The blacklist. The blacklist, right? The NFL league. The no friends left league, right? I don't, I don't. Man, I came from Amway. I talked to them about everything under the sun about my products. They're not going to answer my, put that list together and put a script together for each one of them. The ones that you don't think will do anything with you, tell them that just for fun. Listen, I'm giving you a call because I'm anticipating you to tell me no, and I'd rather you tell me no now than later. I'm going to get you off my list. That's what I'm going to do, right? Yes, I know I've talked to you about insurance before, but I'm not at that other company any longer. And let me tell you why. Boom, 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 boom. I'm doing some other things I want to talk to you about sometime. That's what I'll be doing. But, you know, when you create a joke in your conversation, they're more open to talking to you, right? Like, like for example, if I was, um, like, if I was trying to get a hold of an agent, I can give you some tips right now, right, for the builders, Trying to get a hold of an agent and you can't get a hold of them, can't get a hold of them. They're not answering, they're not answering, they're not answering, they're not answering, right? Send them a text message. Hey, listen, I didn't know I slapped your mom. They'll respond back, wait, what? Slap my mom? What are you talking about? I had to have slapped your mom, but you haven't answered my phone calls in forever. I mean, you got to be that mad at me that you ain't answering my phone calls in forever, bro. It's, I mean, I had to have slapped your mom. I, I, I do something like that. Like, I, I'll, like I'm, I'm dead ass serious. I'll, I'll do something like that, right? Or like, if I know you, right, and I'm, and I'm good friends with you, right, like, like Rob, Rob and, I, I mean, Rob and I go way back. And let's say Rob goes through a phase where I just can't get older. I might send him a text and say, hey, did somebody tell you I slept with your wife or something? Like, why ain't you answering my calls? And I wait for him to respond, right? It's something to catch them off, off guard, right? <laughs> Look at Rob, right? It's something to catch them off guard. Like, did somebody tell you that, bro? Because I don't know why you ain't answering my call, right? You know where I learned that from? I learned that from my own mother. My own mother, I learned that from. My own mother, like, yo, someone will avoid you like you slap their mama, right? Someone will avoid you like you owe, like they, you, you know what's the easiest way to get somebody not to take your calls? Have them owe you money. When somebody owes you money, boy, they dodge you left and right. So I'll use, I go, hey, do you owe me money or something that you don't answer my phone calls? And typically the humor causes them to respond back. Do that with your NFL league list. Do that with your NFL list. Your no friends left list, do it with them. You'd be amazed how many people will respond. Now, the ones that you think will become clients, take them out to lunch. Take them out to lunch. We, we're, we're willing to invest into leads. Well, listen, invest into a few sandwiches, y'all. Take them out to lunch. I'm going to take you out to lunch, right? And here's what I would be doing in today's time, 2021 November. I would be saying something like, yeah, please. I was saying something like, listen, I want to take you out to lunch. I've got, I've got this amazing idea for 2022 and I want to, I want to get your feedback on it. You know, what's, what's, you know, what's one of the, one of the things that people love to give forever and ever and ever. Anybody know what it is? Their opinion. Advice. Advice, their opinion. Everybody wants to give their opinion. When you ask them for their opinion, they feel so special. Oh my God, they're like, oh my God, you're asking me for my opinion? Take that list of people that you think will become clients and ask them for that one thing that they want to hear, right? Hey, listen, I'm coming, to, I'm coming towards the end of the year. I will, I'd like to sit down with you. I got this amazing idea for 2022 and I want your feedback. I just want your opinion. Give me your advice. When you do that, Oh, your gold, your gold, your gold. They are, you want to know what I think, right? Take them out to lunch, Panera bread, whatever, buy them a sandwich. Let them know, listen, I'm opening up my own agency. This is the language you want to be using. You didn't join a company. I'm opening up my own agency. I'm going fully independent. 
this is the name of the company that I'm thinking about, right? And these are the, this is my vision, this is my goal, this is my this, these are the services I wanna offer. You know, I just want your take on it, I want your feedback. You'd be amazed what they'll give you. You'd be amazed what they'll give you, what data they'll give you. Then I want to say, well, you know, who do you think, who do you think would need some of my services? What do you just ask for? You just ask for referrals. That's what you did. You just asked for referrals, right? And then, and then, and then here's the clutch. Here's the, the clutch. You got to be patient to use these types of techniques, but they work. Let me ask you a question. If I get this business up and going, I mean, legitimate business up and going, licensed, you know, corporation, biz, if I get this business going, would you consider that business to be worthy of your relationship? Would you do business with, with that business? Right? Would you do business with a business like that? You know what most people say? Oh, uh, yeah, I would do business with a business like that. Do you know why? They just gave you advice about the business. So if you're literally using the data they gave you, oh my God, you would do this with the business, you would do that. I'm not telling you that you do everything that they tell you to do with the business. I'm telling you, you take notes and you salivate the information that they're giving you. You take notes and you salivate the information they're giving you because now they feel important. And you tell them, I get it. So you would do this with the business and this with the business. And this. Let me ask you a question. If this business actually comes to life, you're telling me you would do business with, some, with a business like that? You know what they're going to say? Hell yeah, I would do business with someone like that. And then you know what you do? You put that in the back burner. You don't do it in Jan. You don't do it January 1st. Don't call them January 1st. Hey, listen, I did it. No, no, no. February. February, call them up. Hey, listen, you remember when we went out to lunch in November? Remember that, that business you were telling me about? Bro, I got it up and going. I did it. Matter of fact, you know what you do? You invest. You get yourself some business cards. You send them a picture of the business card with the company name and the logo. I did it. I got the business up and going. Now you have the permission to ask them for the relationship. That's what you do with that type of market. Right? You see how we're using the psychology of sales, the psychology of building relationships and stuff? That's what I'll be doing. That's 100% what I'll be doing. So social media, I want to get in front of people that I know have a higher potential of losing their jobs. I want to. Right? I would be joining new mom groups. Ladies, you all can do that. Gentlemen, you can't do that. You join new mom groups. You might get kicked out. They might think you're you know, one of those creepers. Don't do that. But you can join new dad groups. You can join new dad groups. Join new dad groups. Join new mom groups. Do it, especially, especially if you have kids already. Especially, which I, I, I mean, I'm looking at the, the live people here. I think everybody here has kids. I'm not sure if Robertson does. Robertson's the only one I don't know if he has kids or not. Everybody else here I know has kids. And if you got babies, even better. Join those groups. Join those groups. You know what you do when you join those groups? I want you to host an event. Host an event. Host a local event. Now, when you join those groups, try your best to make them local groups. Don't get me wrong. Our licenses go to all 50 states, but at least try to join some local groups. So if you're in like, like Jennifer Jung, join some Illinois mom groups. Join them. Right. You know, join some some groups that are in reference to your ethnicity as well, too. Like I'm Puerto Rican. I would join some Southwest Florida Latino groups. Right. I would. Right. If I if I'm Rob. Right. And I'm, I'm DJ Robert. I'd be joining some DJ groups. <laughs> but join the groups and then host events. The reason I say the single mom groups are more successful in this. Single moms love to connect on the weekends with other single moms because they want to do stuff with other, you know what I mean? What kind of events? It depends where you're at. You know what I mean? Like Tanisha, you're in, you're in central Florida, right? Find an open park where you could do, you know, Hey, let's get all the kids together. I'm going to bring my kids. You bring your kids. You know, the kids never get out. It's pandemic, right? They, you know, meet other people, whatever. Find a park. You know, this person brings water, this person brings Gatorades, this person brings snacks and get all the kids together. But the whole concept is you get the moms together, you now get to chit chat with them and build rapport with them. You get to kind of, you get to, you know, you get to do that. You build rapport with them. Like I'm in Southwest Florida, I'm right by the beach. You know how many mom groups meet up Saturday mornings by the beach for like mom yoga and, you know, 
infant swimming lessons and all this other stuff like those are that's like that's like that's like a cesspool for networking cesspool for networking i would definitely be doing that i would be doing that there's one thing that i did in the beginning in this industry and i still would do it to this day i just i'm i'm showing you how to use technology to do it i didn't do it with technology i did it do through word of mouth but i made myself so present in my community events that I wanted the business to become fun. And if you're behind a desk every single day, this business becomes a dread. But if you're out networking with people, this business becomes fun. It becomes fun. It really genuinely does. But I, I, that's what I would 100% be doing. 100% I would be doing. Okay. Um, leads. Let's talk about leads for a little bit. Right. If you've got dollars to invest, you know, I would invest into both leads at the same time. I would have Jarvis. Why? Because Jarvis is an artificial intelligence virtual assistant. I would be pumping 100, 200 aged leads into Jarvis. I'm talking about ages that cost five bucks a lead type stuff. You pump in a, you know, 100 of those in there. And let Jarvis do the work for all hundred of those age leads. Let the, let Jarvis text message and voicemail let it. But you also want to have one hot list of, of exclusive real time leads. Those cost more money. Those cost twenty five bucks a pop. Twenty five bucks a pop. Minimum twenty five. You got to order, right? This is our new lead gen company, Robertson. I don't think we even talked about it. This is a company that I, I recently started partnering with. They have a reputation for providing a much higher return. But these are real time leads now. They cost more money and they have a minimum. So you're buying 25, you're buying 25 minimum for 25 a piece. You're spending 500 bucks, but you're getting uh, a, what? I just, I just bought like leads from two companies just recently. Okay. They're like $25 a piece, but. They're yeah, real time gonna, leads. They'll gonna, build you, they'll build you a, a social media uh, campaign yeah. within a 25 mile radius of, of, of the zip code you select. Yeah, and they did. qualify each of these leads and they push them into, you know, your, your Jarvis. Those, those would be high intent. Like those, when you see one of those pop in, call them. Cause you know, the person just filled out that questionnaire. Now that's if you have dollars to invest, right? If you notice my first conversation is, listen, I don't have those types of dollars to invest. So how do I get in front of people? Now I'm showing you what to do. If you do have dollars to invest, let me tell you what else I would be doing. I'd be putting together a list of real estate agents mortgage brokers and car salesmen i've been putting that list together why i'd want to meet with them and i'd want to tell them that the firm that you represent has a credit repair division has a credit repair division right why would i want to meet with those people because those people have a huge list of people that can't qualify for cars because of credit or can't qualify for mortgage because of credit or can't qualify for a house because of credit. They have a list of people that they're dying to get them the product that they're selling, but they can't because of credit. So you know what they can do? They can refer that to you. They refer you those people, right? And this is for everyone, even those that are non-licensed yet. Refer it over to our credit repair division. If the client takes action, you make some referral income. Right. What was the name of the last one? Mortgage brokers, real estate agents and um, car salesmen. OK. Now. In this business, I've learned every opportunity you get to build a relationship with someone is an opportunity to sell. So you might be thinking, I didn't join TKO to sell credit. You're right. You didn't. But you're having a financial conversation with that client. That client's not going to know the difference between what information you're gathering from them that's needed for the credit, what information you're gathering from them that's beneficial for the insurance sale. They don't know. How much income do you make per year? Do we need to know that for life insurance? Yes. Do we need to know that for credit? No. Does the client know the difference? No. That's the truth. What, what assets do you currently have? Do you have any old 401ks anywhere? Do we need to know that for credit? No. Do we need to know that for an annuity sale? Yes. Does the client know the difference? No. They don't. They don't know the difference. They really don't. Right? Mr. Klein, on a monthly basis, what can you afford? What's your budget? 
What's your budget, right? Oh, your budget is boom, 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 boom. When you know their budget, you know how much income they make, you know if they've got any assets in place, you, I mean, you're almost there. You're almost there. You know, you're almost there. So building those relationships helps. Guys, I've referred in the last year, I've referred probably 18 to a 18 to two dozen credit repair clients over to credit repair builders that Natalia has done presentations on and enrolled. 90% of them became life insurance clients. 90% of them also became life insurance clients. Now they didn't all become life insurance clients right away. Some of them did. Some, you know, you could tell those personalities that are very like, help me, they're very forthcoming. You can also tell those types of relationships that they want you to build rapport with them first. You know, and you know, here's how I would do it. I would ask Natalia, Natalia, every month when you pull their credit and you give them the news, if there's a month where they have a, you know, 50 point increase on their credit score or whatever, can you let me know? Can you let me know when that happens? Because that's the best time to approach somebody when they got good news. Because that's what Natalia does, which just so you guys know, she pulls their credit once a month to relook at it and see how it's changed. And if it's a 20, 30 point spike up, 50 point spike up, she screenshots it on her software, sends it to them. Hey, congrats, your score went up 60 points. Now, what if you knew that data? Right? If you knew that data, hey, congrats. I heard your score went up 60 some odd points. Awesome. You know? Hey, where are you going to be at today? I'm going to be in Humble Park. Oh, cool. I'm going to be out that way as well, too. Let's grab some lunch. We'll celebrate. You meet him for lunch. You know what you want to now start talking to him about? Hey, when you get that credit fix, what's the goal? I want to buy a house. Really? Where at? How much is that house going to be? It's about 300000 Oh, you know, one thing that the lenders are going to look for, they want to see that you're making responsible financial choices. They're going to probably want some type of mortgage protection insurance in place. You might want to look into that now. Right? At the end of the day, you get a chance to build more rapport with them, build more rapport with them, build more rapport with them, build more rapport with them. It's simple. It's honestly, it really is. Every e-commerce client that I've ever come across has become a life insurance client. Every credit repair has become a life insurance client. My health insurance people, I mean, it's cross-selling heaven. And what you're doing is you're going to people that you know have long lists of qualifiable candidates. That's what you're doing. That's why I say mortgage brokers, real estate agents, um, mortgage brokers, car salesmen, people that own title companies, you know what I'm saying? That's what I would be doing. That's what I'd be doing. Let me tell you what else I would be doing. Call up all your friends and family and ask them for five people that they know that are self-employed. Right? This is an indirect referral method, right? Call your mom up. Mom, give me five people you know that are self-employed. Boom. Call your brother. Give me five people you know that are self-employed. Boom, 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 boom. You get a huge list of self-employed people. Why? Self-employed people don't have health benefits. That's why. When you call them up, hey, listen, I hear you're self-employed. Congratulations. I am as well. That means that you don't have a big brother company offering you health benefits, correct? I don't. Well, listen, I help people that are self-employed qualify for free health insurance. We'd like to sit down and chat. Yes, I would. That's what I'd be doing. Guys, your job is to become an advertisement. But you need to be selective. You need to be smart about who you're advertising. This isn't about just running around. Hey, I sell life insurance. This isn't a, I see people put bumper stickers and those metallic things on there. I said, no. No, be, 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 be smart about it. Be smart about it. Find ways to get in front of people that you know at least have one or two criteria that qualify for them needing your services. So if you can get in front of people that you know just are either just like mergers and acquisition companies, companies that are closing their doors. You guys ever done a search on that? Look, let me see. 2021 companies closing. Let me share my screen. Look at this. These chains are closing the most stores in 2021. Family Video, Justice, Fossil, Disney, Express, 
Macy's, JCPenney's, Godiva, Gap, Children's Place, Starbucks, Banana Republic. You want to go to a networking event? Go to one of those places. See if you can talk to a couple of the employees where they're there. Right? Hey, do you know anyone? Has anybody gotten affected at JCPenney's from the layoffs? Wait, what? That's what they're going to say. Or they're going to say, yeah, I know a couple of people that did. Right? Most retailers that closed in 2021. Let's see what we got here. Same thing. There it is. New York and Company. I mean, the Brooks Brothers. Oh my God, Brooks Brothers. Right? JC Penney's, Macy's. Like checking your local area. Heck, check, don't check your local area. Right? Our licenses extend to all 50 states. Go find those stores that close. Go on LinkedIn and research people that show that as their employer. You can use it as either a recruiting opportunity. They're not working. You can use it as a rollover opportunity. If they have an old 401k, you can use it as a free health insurance opportunity. Guys, the Affordable Care Act right now is a gold mine that people are not tapping into. Free health insurance. For who? The unemployed, the self-employed, or the employed by someone that doesn't offer benefits. I'm sorry. That's gold. Free. And you may think, well, wait a minute, health insurance doesn't pay that much. It pays like 15, 20 bucks a month. It does, but cross-selling is insane. It's insane, cross-selling. It is absolutely, utterly insane. You know how I start the conversation? Mr. and Mrs. Klein, I'm going to do my very best to qualify you for free health insurance. However, there are certain qualifications. If I cannot get you to qualify for free health insurance, do you have a budget that, you, that you're willing to spend? When they tell you, well, I don't wanna spend over a hundred bucks. What if they do qualify for free health insurance, but you already know that they can spend a hundred bucks. What are you gonna do with that hundred? Well, let's look at a hospital indemnity plan from Heartland, right? Let's look at a dental revision plan from Emeritus. Let's look at a quick simplified term product from Mutual of Omaha that has living benefits. Boom, boom, boom. Let's look at a critical illness policy from Mutual of Omaha. I mean, you do those, Boom, 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 boom. Oh, there's $1,000 worth of commissions. There's $500 worth of commissions. I mean, yeah, it's not like a, it's not a whale of a case, right? It's not, oh my God, it's made eight grand. But if you do three of those a week, hey, listen, you're making two grand a week doing that. Three a week, two grand a week, easily. Easily, two grand a week. That's 8,000 bucks a month. Oh my God, 8,000 times 12, that's a, that's a six-figure earner. That's a six-figure earner. You know, selling products that are, guys, hospital indemnity plans, um, chronic illness plans, simplified term, simplified term through the Mutual of Omaha. That's like, that's like five-minute approval. Simplified term through Americo, five-second approval, daily pay. Like you can't go wrong with that. If you're not tapping into the health market right now, Affordable Care Act opportunity, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And if you're saying to yourself, I don't have the health license, I'm not telling you to sell the health. I'm telling you to talk about health. Allow our health agents to make the sale on the health. Get a little referral income out of it. Rob will help you out with it. We've already got a comp plan in place for people who aren't even licensed to sell health. But just understand the cross-selling. Trust me, we're going to try to sell a critical illness policy. Trust me, we're going to sell, a, 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 even if it's a term life insurance with living benefits, because that's all your license lets you sell. We're going to try to sell it. We're going to try to sell it. Opportunities, opportunities. But you first got to put together the list, right? This is why I say to you, the first domino is how to find people. You don't just go walking around with a, you know, I'm selling health insurance. No, you're not doing that. You're not doing that. You know what I'm saying? You got to figure out. You got to be strategic about it. Who needs health insurance in today's world that can qualify for Affordable Care Act? Self-employed people, unemployed people, and, or, or, or people who work for employers that don't offer benefits. That third one's hard to find. 
If you happen to stumble upon someone that you know works for an employer that doesn't offer benefits, great. See if you can do something there. But the first two, unemployed or self-employed, that's not hard. Call everybody you know. Give me five people you know that are self-employed. Five people you know that are self-employed. Five people you know that are self-employed. Guys, you know who's self-employed? You know which industry? Think about this one too. Here's another way. Like if you don't want to ask your family, but you still want to get a list of people that are self-employed, what industries do you know of where 99% of them are always self-employed? The beauty industry. Nail technicians, barbers, hairstylists, beauticians, nail, all of those, massage, all of those. Those are all 1099 people. They're renting a chair. They're renting a booth. They're 1099 self-employed. Guarantee you their employers are not offering benefits. Put a list together of that. Put a list. I'm dead ass serious. Put a list together of that. The unemployed, I just showed you how. Look for companies that are closing their doors. Look for companies that are requiring vaccination. Go to social media. You can do it on LinkedIn. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on Facebook. You can search people who employed by dot, dot, dot company. <sighs> right? Create the filters. And you can put, and, and Facebook will give you a list of people that show that as their employer. Just click, add them to your friends list. Click, send them a message. But Tony, what if Facebook blocks me? Who cares? They'll unblock you. They'll unblock you later. <laughs> I'm being serious. But if you don't know how to find people, no matter what kind of marketing you do, you're, you're reducing your percentages. But if you know how to find lists of people that have one or two qualifiable traits, bam. That's why I say credit, right? Mortgage brokers, real estate agents, car salesmen. Everybody here knows at least two real estate agents. Think about it. Watch this. Watch this. For those of you that are on camera, on camera, I'm going to do this exercise with you. Raise your hand if you know at least one realtor. Watch this. Keep your hands up if you know at least two. Two. Keep your hands up if you know at least three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Literally, I'm, I'm still, Dr. Dom still knows more people. I could probably keep going. But you get what I'm saying? Everyone and their mother's a realtor. In Florida, I'll throw a rock. I'll hit four realtors right now in the head. I will. If I go outside right now and scream, Jose, four realtors will answer. Okay. <laughs> I'm being serious. This is the truth. It's just the truth. You know what realtors know? A bunch of people who want to buy houses who don't qualify because of credit. That's the truth. It's the truth. It's 100% the truth, all right? Go on social media, right? Because this, this, this is a huge thing happening right now. How many of y'all know people who are preggers, pregnant or expecting, right? Raise your hands if you know somebody who got pregnant or announcing on social media. A perfect opportunity. When they go through those situations, that's perfect opportunity to have a financial review. Hey, listen, I want to talk to you about college savings plans for your kids. When, oh, let me tell you, when a parent has a child, they want to get everything under the sun for that child. And they want the best of the best of the best of the best. They do. They're going through that nirvana that I don't know what juices are flowing through their head. You know how I know it? Because I did it too. I did it too. Every time my kids were born, I wanted the best of the best of the best. It's true. That's the best time to approach them. So if you now know the kind of people you're looking for that have qualifiable traits that give them a higher probability of wanting to buy your services. Now you have to figure out a way to get in front of that person. You know, I'll tell you something I used to do. I would go online and I would find uh, chamber events, grand openings. You go, you join your local chamber of commerce, get it. They, they, have, a, they have a website. They have a list of their agenda. The ones that I loved going, grand openings. This new store is opening. This new dentist office is opening. This new law practice is opening. Blah. You know why? Because at grand openings, most of the times, the business owner brings wine and champagne to toast. And all everybody knows that. So a lot of people come for the free alcohol. Cool. I just want to talk to a lot of people. I do. I want to talk to the people. So those 
after f- those Friday after five wine nights, right? At like like Blue Martini over here. It's a local bar on Fridays. It's like business after five wine night, you know, go there with, you know, 20, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever, get some wine and network, network, network and network and network and network and network and network and network. But this right here, oh my God, I'd be joining so many groups. I'd be creating so many different events. I would be, I would genuinely be doing that like crazy. Heck, create a group of things that you like. Like, look, you guys see, I'm a dog lover, man. I got a boxer and a cane corzo. You know, my boxer's a genius. My corzo's dumber than a bag of rocks. But I love them both, right? I joined, I joined groups for boxers and groups for corzos. And you know what I found? I'm dying to do this in Florida, in Tampa, Tampa, Florida. There's a boxer group of people that take their boxers once a month to the local dog beach and they all meet up. And they all meet up. That is, that is networking heaven. That is networking heaven. Now, to close it off, here's what I will tell you. When you go to these events, you got to be willing to shake a hand and say hello. Don't be shy. Don't. You miss out on so many opportunities. You really do. You genuinely miss out on so many opportunities. Just say hello to people. It, it, it's crazy, but Sandra will tell me sometimes, you know, when we go out in town, she's like, we can't go out anywhere where someone doesn't know you. And and what's crazy is this, you know, maybe 50% of the times that they know me, they were a client of mine or are, but the other 50% of the time, it was just through shaking hands and getting to know people. You know what I mean? Like right now, someone tells me, hey, I need somebody that knows how to do this. And if you're in the Southwest Florida area, I know somebody. Because I was willing to shake hands and make friendships and make relationships. So when you go to these networking events, really enjoy what this business offers you. I look at it like an opportunity to be an anthropologist. You guys know what anthropology is, right? The study of human cultures and stuff. That's what I look at it like. Like, how are you? How's your day going? Tell me about it. You know what I mean? It gives me an opportunity to tell them what I do. But I'm more focused about them than than me pitching them. Believe it or not, when people ask me, what do you do? I'll give them my quick 30 second, but then I shift it right back to them. I want to know about them. Tell me more about your kids. Tell me more. What do you like to do for fun? What about this? What about that? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, look, I'll close it off and I'll tell you this. This past weekend, my daughter, my daughter joined a group called um, Girls on the Run. For the last 12 weeks, every Tuesday and every Thursday, she would, she would run a mile and a half at school and I'd pick her up. And it was all getting her prepped for a 5K run, right? 5K is 3.4 miles. So you guys know if you've never ran it, right? I was a runner in college. I was a runner in high school. That was my 18, 19, 20, you know, 21, 28, not 38. (laughs) Not 38. I find out that this year, three weeks before the run, three weeks, guys, before the run, I find out that she's allowed to bring with her a running buddy. And who does she call? Dad. Bobby, I can bring a running buddy. Will you come with me? <laughs> call your mom. Oh, no, I can't call your mom. My ex-wife is pregnant, by the way. She's going she's gonna to have her third child. And I'm like, oh, I guess I got to go run, right? And I don't mind doing it. I'm, I'm really big with that stuff. Like, I, I coach my son's basketball team. Like, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? But... Here's what I learned, right? Some people think I'm crazy, but this is the way that I am, right? My ex-wife shows up with her husband, right? Husband's super cool guy. I, I like him a lot. He's, he's a decent human being, um, treats my kids well. He's a runner. And I'm like, you're running with us, right? <laughs> so here's my daughter with her stepdad and her dad running, right? But I'm building rapport, <laughs> which I don't think my ex-wife actually wanted me to do that. But I find out, that he runs a little side business of graphic design and graphic art. And I'm like, hey, I get shirts and stuff like that done frequently. I might be able to leverage your services, but why, why do I say that? It was just my ability to say hello and just wanna learn about somebody. That's all that it really is. You know, and, and you just, you never know those relationships that you establish that way. Now, when you establish those relationships, make sure you get them on social media. Social media is more important than their cell phone number. 
because on social media they get to see your posts every day, 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 every day. If you're posting every day, and and be mindful, post good stuff too. Don't be that person that posts a bunch of drama, because again, that can work against you. They see your stuff every day, every day, every day, right? Sandra and I just found a place that we're gonna move into. Ask ask Sandra what was the first. You know what's the first thing they did? They checked me on social media directly in front of me. And she was like, hey, we got 29 people in common on Facebook. I'm like, oh, cool. Let's look through them. Oh, and, you know, we're looking through. Oh, I know this person. I know this person. I don't know this one. I don't know that one. But she was profiling me on social media. I'm profiling her. You know how many business, you know how many business opportunities I've been able to find because I get people on my social media? Just because I get them on social media. That's the only reason why I created the business relationship is because I got them on social media. Gerzo, Gerzo's on here right now. Gerzo, I never had his phone number. I just knew he wanted to get into the insurance industry, so we became friends on social media. When I, reach, when I wanted to reach out to him, boom, that's how I did it. The last health insurance sale that I did that I sent over to Rob is a six foot nine, how much is, how, what, six, he's a big boy. He's six foot nine, like 350 pounds. Yeah, there you go, right? Social media. Social media is like the watering hole of America nowadays. So when you go to these networking events or when you meet with these real estate brokers or when you meet with these car salesmen, get them on your social media. Make sure your social media gives educational stuff and brings value. Don't be that person that's just there to talk smack about stuff. Stay away from controversial topics as much as you possibly can. Stay away from political conversations. Stay away from religious conversations. Stay away from it. You're a salesman trying to help people in the community. You don't want to lose every single Democrat because you're a heavy Republican. You don't want to lose every single Republican because you're a heavy Democrat. You want to be able to help them all. Stay away from that world. Help them all. That's what I would be doing today if I was a brand new agent in 2021. And, and, and if I was on a tight budget, but I wanted to make sure that I networked. And the analytical side of me, the structured side of me would put a number in my head. I would say, you know, I, I want to get 15 new contacts every other day and go after that number. You can't just say I'm going to try something but not put a number in place. You got to have a bullseye. You got to have a bullseye. A goal without a date is just a dream. That's all it is. It's a hope. It's a wish. Same thing applies in this world. If, if you don't put a bullseye, like when I was in the referral business, to me it was 25 referrals every single week. So if I was working five days a week, I'm five a day. If I'm working six days a week, you get what I'm saying? But I wanted 25 a day. If I'm going out to network, it was the same thing. When I went out to networking events, I had a number in my mind. I would say, I want 10 business cards, 10 business cards. And you know what I do when I collect the business card at a networking event? I, 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 all I try to do is talk so little about work and so much about them personally. And once I learned something about them personally, I write that note down on their business card. I put it in my pocket because I use that for my phone call the next day. Hey, John, how are you? This is Tony. We met up at the Blue Martini. Remember you were telling me about your daughter that was ice skating and da, 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 da. Oh yeah, what's up? Listen, we had such a great conversation and I realized it was a totally a personal conversation. We never really got a chance to talk business. I was looking at your business card here. You're in, you're in central Naples, aren't you? I am. Well, listen, I'm going to be out that way tomorrow. You know, I've got some open slot. I've got a little bit of an opening between two and four o'clock. You mind if I stop in for 10, 15 minutes, just kind of give you my business card and share with you a little bit more about the work that I do. Right. Tony, were you really going to central Naples tomorrow? No, but I was when I saw his address was in central Naples. <laughs> right. But that's, that, that's so, but, but when I go to these networking events, I would put a number in my head. I go, I'm not leaving this event until I get 10 new numbers, 10 new numbers. And anytime someone wanted to talk to me about work, yeah, yeah, I'm in the, I, I do insurance and investments. And I flip it. Tell me about yourself. You guys remember form? For those of you from, from the network marketing world, right? Form, family, occupation, recreation. I was doing that at a networking event. I just wanted to learn about them personally. Because if they could like me for who I am as a person, they'll meet with me for a business sort of conversation. And I can't remember. Anybody that goes to a network event is trying to push their product. Let them talk to you about their life. Talk very little about your product and talk and talk more about their life. And then 
Meet him at work. Meet him at work. Boom. Simple. You know who's also 1099? Personal trainers. A lot of personal trainers at gyms are 1099. So if you're that person that likes to go to the gym, right? Gym rats, raise your hands. Gym rats, gym rats, gym rats. Right? We like to go to the gym, okay? Don't be afraid to go and talk to some of the personal trainers. You know, what benefits do they provide you? What this, what that? They don't do any of that stuff for you. And then, you know, you want to host? Host a host a um a finance and fitness event. You know, you know what's one thing I used to do at the gyms? I would say to them, I go, hey, do you guys ever collaborate once a month for like a team meeting? You know, realtors do that too. Realtors once a month have a team meeting. They do, they have a team administrative meeting. You know what I do during those team administrative meetings? I talk to the broker and I say to them, hey, if I can bring lunch. If I can bring some sandwiches and some Cokes during your team meeting and I host it, can you give me a 20 minute platform to introduce some of the services that I offer? Of course, you know what they, they always say, of course, free food, yes, yes, no problem. Stop at the grocery store, local Publix, pick up a little tray of sandwiches, cost you what, 30 bucks, a couple of Cokes. If it's breakfast, you're gonna meet them at, you know, you know stop off at Dunkin' Donuts, get a case of that coffee and, and, and two boxes of donuts whatever it's 15 bucks 20 bucks but it gives you a platform you get 20 minutes to pitch thank you guys i'm glad you enjoyed it blah 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 you know what i do i bring with me a clipboard right for an attendance and here's my verbiage to them i go listen everybody if you can before i get started i need to get i need to have an inventory of who my audience is the insurance industry, the financial services industry requires that whenever I speak in a group setting, I have an inventory of my attendance. I'm going to pass out this clipboard. Please put your name, your phone number, and your email information there because I need to give this to my compliance officer. Who's my compliance officer? Me. I'm my own compliance. But just so you know, securities world requires that. That's where I learned that from. When I was securities licensed, if I hosted an event with more than four people, I needed to have an inventory of who attended. But I took that and I even applied into the insurance world. I even applied into the life insurance world. So when I'm hosting these events, right, real estate offices, um, they meet once a month. Personal trainers at gyms, they meet once a month. They have their administrative meeting. I host the lunch. Listen, if I provide lunch, right, would you allow me a platform to talk to them for 20 minutes about some of the services that I offer? And you can solicit it like a free HR benefit. Free human resources benefit. Come learn about your insurance products. Right? Lunch provided. When you say lunch provided, they show up. They show up. They do. They show up. And because they're eating, they're giving you time to talk. And because you're getting an inventory list of their names and numbers before you begin, you now have a follow-up list. You have a follow-up list. You know what I talk about when I go to those meetings? Tax-free retirement planning. You know, insurance that stays with you when you leave your employer, right? Or in today's world, free health insurance as well. I'm, I'm literally doing, if I got a 20 minute platform, I'm taking seven minutes for each of those topics. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you so much. My name is Tony Martinez. I appreciate the time you guys have given me to talk to you guys today. How are the sandwiches? They're good. They're good. How's the coffee? Is it good? Okay, awesome. Let me not waste your time. I'm going to get right into it. I see you guys are all real estate brokers. I want, I want you guys to know my firm specializes in working with real estate agents. Something that real estate agents have and something that real estate agents don't have. They have the opportunity to make a lot of money selling houses. They don't have many places to safe harbor that money and grow that money tax-free. Right? I'm, raise your hands if you have employee benefits. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nobody here does, right? None of us do. What if I could show you an environment that I help a lot of realtors invest into that gives them the ability to earn six to 8% on their money, have tax-free returns, and have the ability to tap into it again when they need to invest into that next real estate property without them having to worry about penalties. Those are the things that I'm currently doing right now with realtors. And if I'm talking to a Remax office, I'm gonna tell them those are the things I'm currently doing with other offices. And I'll, and I'll list off a couple other real estate companies. 
Why? Because people always want to do what their competitors do. It's called the one-up syndrome. It's called the one-up syndrome. So if I'm, if I'm sitting at an LA fitness, I'm going to tell them what I'm doing with Planet Fitness personal trainers. I'm going to tell them what I'm doing with, you know, 24-hour fitness personal trainers because guess what, Mr. Miss, Mr. and Mrs. LA Fitness, you guys aren't doing what they're doing. You know what they want? They want to do what they're doing. It's the psychology. But I get 20 minutes to talk about tax-free retirement. One, right? That's seven minutes on that. Seven minutes on insurance protection that will stay with you way past your career. And free health insurance. Some people get triggered by the insurance legacy. Some people get triggered by tax free retirement. Some people get triggered by the health insurance. But some people get triggered. Some people get triggered. I apologize. I know that I took about, I took 22 minutes longer than I wanted to. But I really wanted to have this conversation with you guys because, you know, learning how to run illustrations and learning how to be a beast at selling these products and learning the ins and outs of underwriting and learning the ins and outs of contracting and all, none of that stuff matters if you don't first know how to get in front of the right person. So you got to first learn how to become a finder. That's that first domino that turns into the actual client meeting, that turns into the case design, that turns into the closing meeting, that turns into boom, underwriting, and then turns into commissions. But that first domino triggers all the rest. So think of yourself as a marketer and figure out what ways could I put together lists to get in front of people? And I just gave you a bunch of ideas on how to do it. And I recorded this so you guys can reference back. Okay. Tanisha asked a question. Let me see here. Would you please post on Voxer once this video is up, please? I'll give you my word that once we get done here today, I'm going to post it up in probably the next 10, 10 minutes once we're done. I will post it up so you guys have it. Does anybody have any questions before I let you guys get going? No, no, no. All right. Go build your campaigns, guys. Go build your campaigns. On the, on, the, uh, on the investment side, I will tell you this, guys. If you're looking to get leads, I'm, I'm partnering up with a new marketing company. I'm still using the older one that provides us the leads that we currently have, but I want to partner up with another company as well because I think having choices and variety is important. They have a huge reputation, huge reputation of getting a higher ROI out of their leads. Now, they're Facebook leads. The company that we've been working with does Google ad leads. This is Facebook leads only on the final expense side. Only on the final expense side, okay? That's their specialty. They stay in their lane. They have a track record of getting anywhere from 20 to 25% return, which means every 100 leads, you should get 20 to 25 clients if you work it right. What they're very proud about is they even say to me, lazy agents will at least sell 15. Now. Pro and con, right? Pro, higher quality. Con, more money. Two types of leads. Real-time lead. Real-time lead means they'll put together a Facebook ad within the zip code you select, and they'll provide you leads within a 25-mile radius of that lead. They'll get all the qualification parameters in place that they need to qualify that lead, and that lead gets pushed to you the moment the client fills out the questionnaire. That's why it's called real-time. You're getting it in real-time. $25 per lead, minimum order 25. So how much are you spending? 500 bucks on that. It'll take about three to four days before you start seeing leads getting dropped into your CRM system or into your email inbox if you don't have Jarvis because you don't have to have Jarvis in order to get you know, those, those leads, okay? But they'll drop in as you know people fill out those questionnaires. Second type of lead is an aged lead. Now, this is a very different type of age lead. The age lead is going is to be anywhere from 21 days <clears throat> to 365 days, okay? 21 days to 365 days. Those leads aren't necessarily resold. You know, a lot of companies sell age leads. These are leads that they've already sold. These leads are not necessarily always resold. So some of these are untouched leads. It just so happens that it was in a territory where either there wasn't a lot of buyers or, or, there, or uh, what do you call it? Or it's just not a, 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 a heavy market for purchasing leads, right? How do you get them? You can either buy them in stacks of 50. If you buy them 50, it's $7.50 per lead. That's $375. If you buy 100, you're paying $5 a lead, so you're spending $500. But here's the other benefit. You can select 
the 25 mile radius as well. This is not gonna be state leads. Like the lead company we're working with right now for age leads, I can give you a commitment on the state. So if you're in Illinois and you buy Illinois leads, just because you live in Chicago doesn't mean you're getting Chicago. You could get you know somewhere down south of Illinois. So you gotta be willing to work the state. With these age leads, you could still select the county that you want them to come from. You can say, hey, I live in you know, this county right here and they'll get you leads within a 25 mile radius of that particular area. If you do get age leads, I would encourage you to have to get Jarvis. I think you should have the CRM Jarvis because if you're uploading 100 leads, let's be honest, you ain't calling 100 leads three times a day, not unless you have a speed dialer. And if it's an age lead, I would want 100 leads getting text messages and voicemails automatically for 12 weeks, leveraging the campaign that Jarvis creates for what, 75 bucks a month if you're a non VP or 100 bucks a month if you are, like it's worth it. It's worth it. Just the speed dialer alone makes it worth it. I think Phone Burner has a pretty decent speed dialer and they, they charge 100 bucks a month by themselves without any of the other added, added services. So those are the two types of leads that I have. They're only final expense, they're not mortgage protection. If you're looking for mortgage protection, you can still use our older vendor. Our older vendor works, but I will tell you, what I've seen statistically is that it's about a 10%. It's a five to 10%. So every, every hundred leads you get, five to 10 will buy. You know, um, this one, higher return. So let me ask this question. Is anybody here looking into buying leads? Because um, I think Irvin mentioned it as well too. And I wanted to go over that price, those, those price points so that you have them. Um, Irvin, shoot me a text and let me know which of those you're more interested in purchasing and I'll get you set up. If there's anybody else that wants to buy, like I said, three options, right? Real-time leads, $25 a lead, minimum order 25, so that's 500 bucks. Age leads, if you're buying 50 of them, you're paying $7.50 per lead, so that's $375 or you buy a hundred of them for 500 bucks. So the choice you have to decide is, am I spending 375 or am I spending 500? If your answer is 500, do I want real-time leads, only 25 of them, or do I want a hundred age leads? But because you're still spending the same amount of money. If you can't do 500 and you're only doing 375, then the only option you have is obviously the age leads. Hit me up, shoot me a text message, let me know which one you want. I'd like to do a big collective group order so we can get up and going. Have a good one, be blessed. I'll stay on for another minute for any questions you guys have. But other than that, enjoy your night.